The oldest team in baseball is marking 150 years with a season-long celebration. And the Cincinnati Reds are kicking it into high gear this weekend by unveiling a new feature to the ballpark. Mm -hmm. And Local 12's Megan Mongello is live at Great American Ballpark to show us what's been created. Megan. Well, hello, Paula and Kyle. I am standing in what was the Rose Garden. You can tell it is now gone and completely transformed. Behind me is what has taken place inside of that former space. That is the 1869 Red Legs Pavilion. This area will be open 24-7. You don't even need a game ticket to get into this space. And we talked to the designer that created that dome. He told us what it took to get it done. And I can tell you that this area right here is definitely an area that is unique to the Cincinnati Reds. We talked to the owner, Phil Castellini of the Reds, and he talked about how creative this space was, but it started with one idea um, that came together between him and the sculptor. Yeah, that guy's name, yeah, I remember him. That's George Wright. <laughs> yeah, and George Wright was the star of the team. So he's kind of like a Joey Votto, you know, kind of guy. Walnut Hills artist Tom Suchia had to look at pictures from 150 years ago to mold the faces of the 10 players and two staff members on the original Cincinnati Reds team. He's used to creating statues of old players. All of them at Great American Ballpark are his design but he's never designed a structure before. So this is completely, totally different. And then, and since I'm not like a real architect, I'm just like a fake architect, I actually hired uh, Elevar, which is a, a architecture firm based here in Cincinnati, and they designed, did a lot of the architectural problem solving. Suchia designed the top of the dome to look like a crown, a nod to the Queen City. The pillars resemble bats. Cincinnati Red COO Phil Castellini wanted the entire thing to look old. What would have a gazebo in a city park look like 150 years ago? It would have been limestone, old school. So we combine kind of those elements of his bronze talent with the busts of those players in bronze, but on the framework of that traditional limestone gazebo. And then that plaza, we took the fence down, took the rose gardens out, still are honoring Pete and his hit. A baseball plaque in the turf marks the spot of the historic hit. Throwback uniforms are also part of the season long anniversary. The first set will be Saturday with a look from 1902 and Sunday the Reds turn blue with a look from 1911. We worked on finding the exact replica colors but in today's breathable fabrics so that the players if they're playing in a throwback uniform they're on a level playing field with the visiting team because their uniforms still feel very current like regular clothes. You can also see the throwback uniforms on Mr. Red Leg statues. 24 of them are up throughout greater Cincinnati. It's all to celebrate the oldest team and brand in all of pro sports. This area I'm standing in will be officially dedicated before the game on Saturday. That is because May 5th is the anniversary of the first game the Cincinnati Reds ever played 150 years ago. And by the way, in case you're wondering, the Reds did win that game by a score of 45 to 9. So I guess uh, we'll see if that's the score when they play the Giants here this weekend. That would be pretty awesome if it was. We'll send it back to you in the studio. Oh, I love this. I love the statues. Everything's looking so festive. Thanks, Megan. And on Saturday, the Reds giveaway is a Mr. Redlegs bobblehead wearing the 1869 uniform. Hey.